I'll just have to sing myself. Rise and shine. Bring God the glory. Get cheats. Cut to the headshot. It must be Monday. Hey, good morning to you. I'm Michael, or as the grandkids call me, Rue. So glad to have you here with me this day. Uh, this great day in uh, Southeast, uh, yeah, South Charlotte. Charlotte is uh, where I live. Charlotte, North Carolina. Every time I say the word Charlotte in North Carolina, I think of that movie, uh, National Treasure, where he says, the Charlotte, the truth lies with Charlotte. The truth flies with Charlotte. You know, he pours the pours the water on the snow, and it's on the bell. It's on the ship's bell. If that movie's on, I'm telling you what, if that movie is on, my wife goes, we're, we're watching that movie. Uh, not because of Nicolas Cage, just because of the concept of American history and the journey and the journal. Let me say hi to some of you, and thank you for jumping on this morning. We are going to get through uh, maybe a painting. That happens every now and then. Let's see, and I've, I've lost uh, my bee here somewhere. You know, that's a bad thing. I got a bee in my bonnet and I've lost it. I may have just knocked it off the desk right then. But how can I write down how many days I'm counting if I can't find my little B-52? I'll find it before the show's over. He'll show up here somewhere. I'm digging around, looking. All right, let's see. I'll say hi and then we go. I know what day it's going to be. Wait, is this it? This could be it. Oh, yes. Ta-da. I found him. He was hiding behind the computer screen. All right, so it is. It is day 59. No, 69. 69, right there. There it is, right there. 69. There's the last mark. You didn't even see me mark that down because I'm just being a goofball this morning. I need to get my head in the game. I'm, I'm late in my first cup of tea. There's 69 little marks right there. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, now let me get everything organized. Great, Scott, say hello. Um, I'll do that, uh, in a little better, uh, segment. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Um, good morning to you from Southern Cal. That's, I said, I said hi to you, Tander, but welcome aboard. You were the first name that popped up this morning. Patricia, uh, thank you. Mary and Linda, thank you from Northwest Ohio. Got an Ohio story. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good morning, Angie. Um, uh, from Arkansas, from the sunny South Florida. Hey, I spent uh, a few years at, um, in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, you know, some say it's it's southern Georgia, but it's northern Florida. But man, is it gorgeous there. Okay, the beaches are white. The shark's teeth are numerous. That, that means the sharks are numerous. Uh, fun place to be. Taking my uh, paper towel that I usually wipe off my paint with. Look at this. You know it's going to be the start of a week. I got a clean paper towel at the desk. There it is right there. Okay. Um Let's see, Angie, uh, Diana, good morning to you. Kim, I said good morning. Judy, thank you. From Nebraska, uh, Alice, thank you for being here. Skeeter Pal, glad to be here. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Uh, look for a call from me today, uh, maybe a little later, mid-morning, and we can work that out. Uh, Cheryl Ann, thank you for being here. Lynn Car Clark, thank you. Uh, Lynn Clark, okay, but I'll call you Lynn. Jay Schroeder, whoa, look at this. I uh, actually know I started out, I didn't make it up here at my desk. I was coming up with a mug that had a B on it. So that always makes me think of you, Jane. Terry Tardy arrived over the weekend. Oh, sweet. So you got uh, you got your package. I, I'm excited about that. Um, from the Hoosier State, you know, they used to make those cabinets, right? Hoosier, whose mother didn't have a Hoosier cabinet? And I remember that. That's Memories of Home. We're going to talk about that this morning. Um, Good morning from Ruin Friends. Margaret, thank you for saying morning, Patricia. All right. Some of you are popping in on the movies now. So, wow, 69 days. Is that amazing or what? And Luann, thank you. Um, Monday morning. This is Monday Coffee. Hey, Goober. 
All right. Well, there, let's just cut to it. Okay. Thanks, Luann. I appreciate that very much. Uh, and that's how I feel today. So, uh, Lobby open, great sale frames. Ah, a hobby lobby open and a great sale from frames. I hope you bought a wheelbarrow load of frames because we'll paint something this week that you can fill them up with. And uh, Bobby King, good morning. Anita, good morning to you and, and Pat. So I think I got most of you. Just give you a little shout out. Hey, I thank you guys for getting up, making coffee, grabbing any supplies you might need, coming along. If you're painting along with me, if you're not, if you're doing there, doing whip stitches, that's, that's fine too. Okay. I don't know what a whip stitch is, you know. I might ride like a cowboy, shoot like a cowboy. But I did send out a painting this week that was, uh, or yesterday, as a matter of fact, with my feet in the water. And now I know, you know, I've known this for four times. I know why women go get pedicures. Oh, my gosh. You just go like, you get, she said, sir, you need me to put your massage thing on? I can't paint with a chair doing a massage thing. What's the matter with you? So I painted in the chair, took my bailout bag. You betcha. Took this little bailout bag right here, my Klein tool bag. That's my rough and tough and tumble painting bag. And they go, sir, is something wrong? You're going to fix the seat? And I go, no, no. You're going to rewire the chair? Which, by the way, the chair I was sitting in first, the mechanicals didn't work. So they finally had to move me over. And uh, so I finally got situated. And uh, I was looking for the little board I painted with, and I don't see it. That's frustrating. What do you do with it? I've lost so much stuff this morning that it's, uh, I need to just start the show over. You ever thought about, let's just start over. Can I get a mulligan on Monday? <laughs> uh, Lynn, Linda, if you're typing something, I missed it. Or you fell asleep at the keyboard. I, I love your, your note here. I'm just going to show it. Here's, here's what Linda just typed me. Can everybody read this? Did it come up? Oh, there it is. Thank you right there. Well, that is and good morning. Okay, so I want to thank you for that. I have no idea what it says, but I appreciate it. Um, it's 6 a.m. here. Alex, how you doing, my brother? Saw a song by you online the other day, so a rooster seems appropriate. Yeah, no kidding. All right, name is Roo, because the name is hot. It means rooster, and so I paint roosters. But this is my bailout bag. You know, I took this bag, this piece of wood that fits in my other bag, um, a water brush, my tin full of colors yesterday. Um, I didn't even take an eraser. Uh, I, I think there was an old pencil in there, like an old number two something. It was green colored logoed pencil that I probably took from someone. Uh, maybe they gave it to me, but um, I sat down and I had my little paper with me. You know, I always carry a few pieces and I had some, I had some awesome paper with me yesterday. Um, let me show you what I had because if you're not, if, if you're getting better at your skill, this is not the cheapest paper you'll buy, but man, Fabriano, it just feels like gold mine. This is a five by seven and I painted the painting yesterday. I painted one of the fly fishing paintings on this and then I painted another painting that I'd show you, but I was sitting there. I sold that painting, but I painted a painting for Tina who is the person uh, that, uh, that my wife and her share food. They, 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 she bakes, she cooks for my wife sometimes. They've been friends. Um, my wife has helped their daughter go to camp a couple times in the summer. And uh, she has been doing my wife's uh, pedicure manicures for years since we moved here. And uh, so I painted her a painting yesterday. And this is the painting that I painted. There it is right there. This is a, another one like it. Someone asked me what I painted. Judy, I think, said, what would a man paint if he's sitting in a pedicure chair? And this is what I painted. I painted this rooster. It says, I like this green. Uh, green's good for sneaking up on grasshoppers. And so they were laughing about what color. So the lady finished my feet. She got them wrapped in a towel. I'm sitting there painting, you know, and I'm going like, I feel pretty secure in my insecurity manlyhood. And um, no, actually, it was kind of fun. And uh, that was very fun. And, and she said, now, what color? <laughs> and so I went, oh, that's a great idea for a painting. So when she said, what color? I whipped out this little four by five piece of paper and my pen. I drew this little rooster, did a little bottle there. And then I thought, ooh, they're going to be green because roosters would be sneaking up on grasshoppers. So there it is right there. There's the painting. And I did two of them. And I left one with the uh, pedicure shop. I said, here, here's, here's my gift. It's not a tip. I owe you more than this. Okay, but. All right, let me let me um, moisten these uh, colors in this pan, and let's get going this morning. So, thank you guys for hanging on, Terry Tardy. I've noticed you've been with me 69 days. Holy smokes. That's a lot of time, isn't it? 69 days I've been doing this online. 
grab a little water bottle, give these a little moist drink here. Just wet these up a little bit. It makes them a whole lot easier, especially if you're using a bamboo brush to, uh, to get that in there. Not too much water coming out of there, just a little bit. It'll shine a little bit on there and then just let that set a little bit while I get everything else ready to go. Move that out of the way. Drinking very strong Thai food tea today. And notice I got two cups on the desk. I think you can see this. This is the Hatch Show Prince I'm drinking out of today. That's regular, extra strong Thai food. I don't have my builder's tea today. I have Thai food, T Y P H O O, Thai food. It's pretty dark, pretty strong. And this is the other cup that I have. Let me, let me show you. Here, there it is up in front of me. Can you see this cup up in front of me? Take a, take a look at the difference, okay? There it is right there. I think you can see it right there. Okay. All right. Look at the, look at the size here. Okay. This cup is the normal diner mugs that you would see today. This was my wife's father's diner mug. I think from one of the plants he used to work with Sears, maybe early on or Levi Strauss. Is that not the coolest? Look at that. It looks like we don't want to have much coffee. So let's give him this little mug. So I've dropped a tea bag in there today. There it is. It's floating down in there. These little tea bags are round. They don't have strings and tags on them, which get water all going down the side. Great for leaving rings on paper. And I've put about a little less than an ounce of water. So it's just floating around in there and it's getting really strong. I'm going to paint with some tea today because I think it's the perfect um, thing for where we're going to go today on a painting. Okay. So I'm going to set it over here so that I paint out of it and not drink it. I'm not going to dip my brushes in anything but the right paint today try anyway let me just get rid of some of the stuff i got up here hey i'll post this if anybody wants a little uh toenail piece it, it'll be a, uh, a very inexpensive original it's signed and chinua i haven't seen you pop up this morning but you sent me a note do i still draw for grit magazine i do still draw for grit magazine um yes uh, every their magazine comes out every other month. In fact, I, I do have one. That's funny that you prompted that, but here it is right here. This was a grit from uh, when July, August of last year. And so we're right in the middle of it again. It's when the crops start to come in. So I'm going to do ruse most of the week. I'm going to do ruse that have to do with the garden. And this one made me think of it. So I pulled it out this morning. Pickled recipes. So uh, grit magazine, by the way, if you don't get grit magazine and you're in a rural community, uh, Look, this is one of those things where I say they don't pay me to say this, but they do pay for a roodoodle every few weeks when they send me a list of the uh, what's going to be in the magazine. And they say, hey, Rue, and I say, what's a wheelbarrow? They go, stop that. They say, hey, we're going to we're going to try and publish these few things about the magazine. Would you uh, paint something? And so I have the opportunity to just get creative like I do with my warm up paintings here and think, what would I paint? And this one was about pickling recipes. Well, it was also about poultry business, uh, insect invaders, jams and jellies, which I almost went jams and jellies. Come on. John Hartford said, why you got to get all them jams, jellies, and preserves? And why you got to put them on your face right before you go to bed? You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You're beautiful. And you'll always come through like Mac as he plays his little banjo. And you go like, what does that have to do with anything? But, you know, he saw the makeup that his wife put on his jams, jellies, and preserves before she went to bed. I love that concept. I love art language. All right. So here's uh, pickled recipes. So let's go to the back. I always They always give me the back page. But this is, and then there's an article in here that refers to probably the pickling. Here goes, perfectly pick, piquant pickles. And then uh, somewhere always in the front of the magazine, you know, this is always fun. You always get it. There it is on page 80. There's a roodoodle. And so, and uh, Rebecca, all these folks are really sweet folks. Uh, Renee there, and uh, K there was Caleb there for a while, and now it's... Uh, Caleb. So here we go. This is the painting I did here, and it's a roo. Somebody owns this original. I don't know. I don't know where it went. Um, there's a rooster in his uh, lounge chair, and he's got a bunch of crocs sitting around. And uh, this is probably vinegar. Yep, there's a bottle of vinegar. And then this is a wash tub. And so the the peeps are all collecting collecting the cucumbers. Time to get those pickles picked, pecked, and packed to ferment. Aren't you going to help? Maybe once I have a little bit more of that cucumber cream cheese. If you guys don't do cucumber cream cheese to go on your sandwiches, oh my gosh. Oh, a little mayo, a little Hellman's mayo. Yes, Hellman's, I said it. Um, they'll use Duke's, folks. You got to use Hellman's for this, I'm telling you. 
um, some cucumbers chopped up really fine, some cream cheese, blend all that together, a little bit of, of, of an onion in there chopped up. Man. And then this was when they were still running uh, Way Rue What's a Wilbur right there. So there's the book. So I do still paint for that. And in fact, I went looking for that original this morning because what we're going to paint today is all about the farm, the garden. But I need a warm up first. So um, let me just do a quick little warm up painting here. And let me add something to the orchestra. You know, I got these things that you go to. I know why people who do shows after so many days, do they run out of material? No, they just want to do something different. So here's, here's our next person in the orchestra right here. And, um, and I think this person right here is going to be playing a uh, a trumpet. Wait a minute. Okay, I hope I got another one of those pins because I just threw that one away. All right, I'm going to have to reach in. Oh, there's one right there. I dropped that pin, I think. And so uh, drop it. Here's the thing. If you own needle points, pin tail needle points, you drop them on their end like this, they're done. Okay, so click them off when you're finished with them. So there's a little trumpet player in the orchestra this morning. Just a little bit of a tux on here. Just got his tux from the cleaners. Um, jazz player from New Orleans. Great music. I listened to some uh, jazz last night at the table. I'm not a jazz fan, but my wife absolutely loves it. And so I was sharing some uh, stuff from a guy named Jean-Baptiste. If you know who he is, he's a phenomenal young musician, plays on some TV shows. All right, so there we go. So let's get a little, uh, I think today they're playing Wagner. Let's see if that's not right. Oh, wow, this is big music. I don't know what happened to it. Fell apart somewhere. It's one, one of those mornings, must be a Monday. So, my music just quit. I haven't quit. I'm still here. All right, here we go. So today, uh, for a warm-up painting, I'm not going to paint the book today. I'm going to dig through that a little bit more and, uh, and see what it is. This is the book I paint in, Weird and Wonderful Words. <laughs> yes, Alex. Thank you for that question. Is that the grit that was advertised in Boy's Life when you were a kid? You know what? It is the same magazine. Then it was a newspaper, and it continued to be in a newspaper until all the way up until the early 2000s. It was a, a small, had farmer's almanacs in it. Um, they became a slick magazine in early 2000s somewhere. Uh, my relationship with them started about 2006, 2007, where I was selling some paintings one day. And I got a call from the publisher who said, hey, I'm Hank Oscar Will, or Oscar Hank Will the Third. I'm going like, dude, I know who you are. I sold you a couple paintings. And he says, you know, he said, which ones? I said, this one, this one. I remembered. And I said, what a great name. And he said, I'm with Grit Magazine, and we like what you do. We'd love to add some humor to our magazine, and it's all about farm life. And I go, you got to be kidding me. I knew Grit when I was a kid. I mean, it was a nickel newspaper. He goes, well, we're kind of a slick magazine out of Topeka, Kansas. And uh, so that's the rest is history. So I've been painting for them for a long time. And uh, what a great relationship. I've gone to one of their shows and uh, they write great articles on how to do things. And some of their cast iron recipes, man, are over the top. And I'm talking a long time today, but uh, you're going to let this guy ever paint? Nope. Just talk. All right. So I got this book so I could just paint in it a little bit. The thing about this is I just use it to loosen up. Uh, I just use it to loosen up my... Uh, my brushes and me a little bit. So I just kind of throw a little on here. Uh, the word is going to appear after I do this somewhere, somehow. I'm looking for it right now. The scientific root meaning of dry um, is really zero. Did you know that? The X is mysterious. X marks the spot. And so I think that's what we're going to do this morning. I've got this. Uh, I like this color, um, a little darker brown in there, and maybe a little darker brown over that, maybe a little bit of gray on top of that. Now we need to get a pen in here and let it just run out a little bit. So you just paint over the words. Is that not the most fun thing you've ever done where the teacher would say, 
I think you're going to be in trouble today because I think you just painted over over the words. I'm going like, yeah, I love that, don't you? And she goes, no, I don't love it at all. Okay. So uh, just needed to practice a little bit of a drawing here. So um, I'm hoping this looks like, um, you know what always fascinated me about what this is? This is, of course, you got it. It's corn stalks. Um, I'm listening to Wagner this morning. I thought he was going to be a little more garden oriented, but I'm not real sure. So uh, I'm about to turn him down just a little bit here. So the, the concept was that this, this starts to look like corn. My favorite part about the corn stalks is not the beautiful green leaves that flop off to the side like this, or even the roast nears that are hanging there. Roast nears, notice that's what I called them when I was a kid. Or the, I did like the little tassels, the little silk that hangs off the end. I think those are pretty cool. What I really like are these on mature corn stalks or these, these weeds that come out like this, or excuse me, the roots that come out and they, they, they join way up high and they break down over the edge and they go into the earth. And so, um, So um, this is uh, this is zoography, which is wood engraving. And so I always wanted to do a woodblock print of corn. And I think I saw one somewhere that someone did. So this, I didn't even know I was going to go to this this morning. I just turned in here, extraordinary X's. And so this is all about the word X and how hard it is to say. Zeister and his xylophone. And uh, um, so exolophy is wood engraving, especially in the cruder sense from wood blocks. And so this made me think of wood block when I glanced up there and saw that. You know how it's always dark and you just carve it out. My son does some speedball wood block prints and uh, he did some in high school. And then you have to go back with a different carving and you have to add the color because you can't do it all at once. And so there's all these steps. I have a friend named Eva Evans at Knoxville, Tennessee. And this past year, she's done these amazing woodblock prints. Um, and I think they're very fascinating how she does that. All I do this for in the mornings is just find something that you can waste a little paint and limber up and feel good about going in. You're not too stiff to get started. So it's a little bit of a throwaway, okay? Just just toss it out there and do it. If you don't like it, no, nobody cares. This is your personal collection. This is just stuff that you do. This is why I paint in this book. It just loosens me up. And I need to get some green and go back in here on top of this and just, just add a little bit of green and just let it be. Look, I'm look how I'm holding my brush. I'm way back here. I'm not in here trying to paint little leaves. No, I'm not at all. I'm in here just trying to let the paint splash and splatter, which is what I love to do. Anyway, when you run through the corn, and I just splattered it on this yellow shirt, which looks great now. So I feel like I'm out in the cornfield. You know, my wife goes, well, did you paint your shirt? I go, well, I couldn't take it off. So anyway, all right. I love it. So, xylography. It's wood engraving. It's a block print. So now because I have a... Um, uh, I have a short-term memory or I have a, you know what, I, as my friend, Dr. Jim Poole says, uh, who is my fast brain doctor, he says, all you need is a longer short-term memory. <laughs> Woodblock, rude doodles. And here it is right here. So I've drawn myself an arrow that goes back up to the woodblock. It's especially engraving, in cruder wood. So you know what? I love this. Now what I'm going to do is, and by the way, I'm using a speedball fountain pen. I'm using this, and I'm just going in, and I'm catching a little of these off the side. There's nobody here who wouldn't recognize this as a scene from the garden. Right. And it's that time. You know, 4th of July, the corn should be what? Knee high. There you go. All right, so that's our warm-up painting this morning. All right. Where's Foghorn Leghorn fan? Uh, were you a Foghorn Leghorn fan? I say, I say, was I ever? Oh my gosh. Before I knew that my name meant rooster, I was a Foghorn Leghorn fan. There's something about, but I also liked the little chicken hawk though. He had some class. He would drag him out by the foot. 
Brandy, good morning from Michigan. You got to be kidding me. Carla, you sold grit as a kid. Don't you love that? Don't you love the connection? Painting outside the lines and all over the words. Janet Kelly, that's it. Warm up. Get yourself a book and just find a word in there that inspires you. Boom. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Here's a page I haven't really painted on yet, so I'll tackle that tomorrow. Let me put a uh, let me put a marker in there. There's where how you use your business cards. There's one of my business cards. They're perfect for that. Original business cards. Gave two of those out yesterday too. That's kind of fun, isn't it? When you when you gotta get out, start making your own business cards. Okay, so here's my painting today. We're gonna be in the garden. Rooster toes, corn toes, grounded this morning. Love it, Judy. Thank you. Well, well, boy. I said, I said, boy. Foghorn leg on it. All right. This is my painting. Uh, I'm going to put my box over here. Got two grandkids with me today somewhere. So when I finish this show, I got to go either take them to get a donut or I got to go make uh, my uh, ricotta cheese pancakes. All right. Here we go. With Wagner in the background, it sounds like you should plant something. I don't know. All right. Here we go. It's uh, it's here's I'm going to go this direction. Got a little scene sketched out here in pencil. Watch this. I'm just going to do a little sign here like this. Sign's always leaning. Of course it is. <laughs> I don't know if I can paint this or not, man. This is like Wagner. Little sign there, just sketched it out, kind of rough. Got a roux coming in right here. I'm not really sketching where the marks are. I just pencil on this. Remember, if you're going to sketch in pencil, which I, I sometimes don't do, but on a long piece of paper like this with a deckled edge, and just rip this off. This is uh, this is mixed media paper. It's probably about 138 pound, slick on both sides. So I'm going to give it a little run. All right, so we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. Don't you love this beautiful color? It looks like I was painting flowers. I don't know. Grandkids are probably doing No, there is a, there's a flower somewhere there. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. All right. I was going to say, if you're sketching with a pencil, and this is a, a an 05, just push button lead, but other, any pencil, sketch like you're on thin ice. Don't dry, don't sketch real heavy, because if you get the paint, then you got to think, oh, I don't want all that pencil in there. Sketch like I could break through the paper at any moment. Okay. All right, so that's how that's how you sketch. Just give yourself an idea, and then don't worry about tracing the exact sketch. You might have a more creative idea when you get to uh, when you get to the painting. Like this leg is going on out of here. I think I'm gonna stop it. No, I think I like it where it is. So, okay, and I, I, I like this foot reaching in here like this. Notice today I did call it a foot, but we know it's a it's a rooster hand. They have lips and hands. I like this tail coming back this way. Tells me he's sort of bowed up there for a little bit of stop. He's tracing across the farmyard. This is what I do. I talk to my paintings. I tell the story as I go. Hey, is it any secret? I paint roosters to tell stories. They're just my characters. That's what, uh, hey, Rue, what's a wheelbarrow is all about? And the other books that I'm trying to work on. But my point is, is that I love the fact that roosters are iconic. I love the fact that they're biblical. They're historical. Um, they're in every landscape and native language across our nation and the world. They're on top of the Protestant churches in Germany. Uh, most of the Catholic churches have crosses, but there was a time when all churches had roosters on tops as weather vanes, uh, as a symbol not to deny Christ. It's just unbelievable. He's the farm bard in Robin Hood. He's the balladeer. He's, uh, the, uh, El Colors. He's the, uh, there's another name for him. He just dropped out of my mind. That short memory thing's coming up. He's he's the rooster that plays the banjo or the guitar and serenades. I, I love that concept. Uh, I own farmbard.com. Sometimes there's going to be a whole book on it. Poems from the ponds, rhymes from the rivers, odes from the oceans. All those are farm bards. The rooster is the farm bard. Okay. In my mind. So that's how I set these up. So am I lost in my art? for about an hour every morning. You bet I am. I love it. Okay. So here's the rooster. He's coming in. He sees a sign here. He sees something for the picking. Hold a paper under a ruler and pull paper up over the edge of the ruler. How did you rip the edge? Uh, yeah, you can do that. Oh, so you guys are answering your own questions now. I love that. 
<laughs> you can do that, but it'll sometimes it'll rip it very, very clean. I didn't want this rip very clean, so I just ripped it out. Um, there is a little fold here, so I held the ruler loosely, okay? And I think that will work. He was a minstrel. That's it. Uh, but not the Christie minstrels. You know who they were, right? Uh, they were they were somebody else. I'm not pressing in hard. I'm not folding hard. I'm not trying to get a clean edge rip. I'm just deckling the edge like that. See that? Bingo. Thank you, uh, Lynn, for that. Uh, you're right. And so, Carla, we know that the duck is going to be the comedian in your barnyard. Yeah, and he always does. And I was a Daffy Duck fan, except that I just like Elmer Fudd better. Okay, so listen, we're not going to get into mayonnaise and cartoon characters. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm thinking now what I need is a little bit of, uh, I need this little peep under here like this. He's the one who set all this up. He's the, he's the ringleader. Every, every group of goofballs has one. And I was that guy some days and these two are talking it over. Then you got, and then what happens is because he missed them. There's, there's a, uh, there's something that every barnyard has. You know what it is? A cinder block. So they're up behind a little cinder block here. See that? <laughs> all right. But they also have. He's got a. He's got a tree limb here. And look at this. The easiest way I know to just make a tree that you don't won't feel like you want to draw a tree, and you go, is it a tree? Could it be? Watch this. We're just going to do some little leaves on it like this, with this pen. I'm using an O5 pen tail. It's liquid gel. And then this guy's got one right here, too, that's maybe leaning out on the other side of him. The limb's coming across like this. These will make perfect sense, I think, when you see what I'm going to put on top of them. Some uh, people do a little more rounded leaves. I like definition in leaves sometimes. Um, watch how an architect renders his work. Um, all right, so there's a little bit of leaves. So you see they've camouflaged themselves. And then here's the guy we've been waiting on right here. This is what we've been waiting to see. He's got a slingshot stock. He's got uh, these are the little peeps in the story. He's standing on, so he can reach this, he's standing on a paint can. Yep. On a what? You guessed it. An apple box. Oh my gosh, I used my apple box yesterday. Caught a massive, massive, massive mud turtle snapper in my neighbor's backyard. The little girl that lives next door. And I hope, hey, Elle, if you're watching this morning, it's turtle time. She wanted to see this turtle, but I said, oh, my gosh, her, her mom sent me a note. Her husband's out of town and said, quick, come and help us get this turtle out of our yard. And so I ran over there, took a walking stick and an apple box and shoveled him up with a stick. Said, get in there, hurt it like herding turtles. And... Uh, Got him in the box and then took him down to the local pond and turned him loose. My grandkids were coming over later, so they rode down with me. And it was like, it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. But like, we're releasing you back to the wild. So I use my apple box for a little bit of everything. Sometimes I stand on it. All right, so you see where we're going with that? All right, except this says, ready for this? Free. This is very Wally e. Coyote, isn't it? Free tomatoes with an E. Okay, there's a nail that's bent in the sign. There's a third side of the pole. There's some grass here. This has green leaves on it like this. These are tomato plants. Uh, it's growing up through there. Maybe you don't string your tomatoes like that. My dad um, put post at the end of the garden and pulled a uh, wire down through there, and then we used tomato twine. All right. Uh, I'd probably erase a little bit of this uh, very fine, and this is the advantage of, of penciling like an ice skater, so you can get rid of all these little marks in there if you want to. You don't have to. Lots of times I'll sell paintings that just have the understudy lines in them. And uh, I have guests or clients or customers who really love that. All right. See if there's any other questions I need to take on here. Told stories in song. Um, yes. When I taught school, we would tear paper with our fingers. See, all of you have a story. Now, you know what? If I haven't done anything, I've awakened the storytelling gene in many of you. Many of you, okay? 
All right, 1030, I got to paint something. What am I doing today? All right, here's a, uh, about a number one uh, bamboo brush, a little water, a little piece of, a uh, little piece of paper towel to uh, drop some of the drops off. I've already dropped water all over this. And I'm going to start, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start over here and paint this direction. If I start over here, my hand's going to be in it the whole way. Ta-da! It's logic, people. Have some fun with it as you go, okay? All right, here we go. So I'm just going to do the sign in a little wood brown right here, just like this. And this is mixed media paper, so I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm using less water, and I'm using less pigment in my paint, in my brush. And here's why. This, this ink on this mixed media paper is going to run a little bit. It's going to bleed, okay, like it does. So let's get another little color here for, for this. So you're going to see a little bit of that black come through. Um, black of the pen is actually going to come through here. These, of course, are tomatoes, and they are they are red with a touch of green. Yeah, they look like apples at a distance, but there's a dead giveaway that they're tomatoes. And you want to know what that is? It's a sign right there. It said tomatoes. So you're going to go, okay, they're, they're tomatoes. They may look. Now, now, while I have the same red, no, I'm not. I'm going to, I'm going to stay with my rule. Okay. And sometimes I don't finish all this at the same time, but I think there's tomato leaves on some of these two here. We'll come in here like this. Get a couple rotten tomatoes. You know, there's always a couple there. There's, there's always a couple that are laying around. All right, so there's some tomatoes. A little bit of tomato vine growing up here on this wire. I'll show you what we're going to do with the ground in a little bit. All right, uh, a little bit of darker red. Come in here and do the waddle on the roux and um, do the shadow back behind his beak and then do his comb in some of that red. A little bit of pigment, not much. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit so you can see just a tad better. Here we go, zoom coming up, and then I'll scoot this over to here. Let's see if that helps you a little bit. Okay, I think so. I try to be nice most days, and this is in my way today. Throw that down, get rid of that. Let's see what else I can throw off the desk here. There's a word that I really love. It's called flotsam and jetsam. Two words, I guess. That's two words in it. And so what happens with flotsam and jetsam is when <laughs> when the ship is sinking, which is not a joke, you uh, you bail out. You throw everything overboard that you don't need. That's flotsam and jetsam. Uh, Carol, my favorite size is bamboo brush. It'll probably zero up through. Um, up through maybe a six or an eight or something like that. You got to be working on a pretty big painting to use something like this. And you think, well, how can I use that anyway? Look at the end of it. I mean, come on. But look what happens when you wet it. Okay. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Sharpened up. Now, if I were going to do sky, one swipe of that and I've got my sky because that's going to hold enough water. It's going to be wet for a while. When bamboo brushes first come to you and you get them, they'll have a little covering on top like this, a plastic covering, and you pull this off. This, let's see if I can show you this. Look at this. Listen to this. That's just the bristles. That's hard as a brick. I can probably hold the brush out by this. Look, there. Once this softens up, they're shipped that way, so they stay intact and shape. And now I've lost my little cover. Here it is. I'll put this one back on. I haven't used it yet, okay? And this is a, uh, I don't know, it's ironic, isn't it, that my Chinese brush is made in Japan. Figure that out. All right. I'd be happy to buy these American-made if somebody would make them. All right, here we go. This is mixed media paper, right? So I'm going to just go in right here, and I'm going in with my with my uh, pen that bleeds. I love this pen. This is a... a it's an old fountain pen, 30 years old plus, but it has speedball ink in it. And sometimes you can look at speedball ink and it'll say archival will not bleed. It says it right on there. I don't buy those inks. I buy the ones that do bleed. And here's the reason why. Look at that. This is no paint in my brush. This is just the ink on this paper. Okay. So I love that. I love to do a little shadowing in the body with this. And then I can come in with a little of my ultramarine blue on top of this. And just give that rooster a little bit of blue. And here's the reason I think this blue is going to work here in this tail really well is because there's going to be a lot of red and greens in this painting. And so it's going to be a good balance. Yeah, thank you for telling about Cheap Joe's art sale. Oh, good. Yeah, 
And I'm actually going to be in Boone uh, this week, I think. And so, in fact, I think I'm going to come to you from Boone one morning. I'm going to be painting in Boone, North Carolina. Um, okay. Now, when you're painting trees, look, we're doing theater here, okay? I'm not doing a study in... Uh, in um, plant life and uh, even for my journal if I'm out and I'm journaling somewhere and I want a little bit of uh, the idea that I saw something that I want to remember or paint quickly this is a good way to do the tree just do a little black in there also come back in with a little bit of bright yellow and drop some of that in there that's always good trees go out and look at your trees they're not all green as the teachers in third grade tell you they were paint your trees green kids paint your trees green you're like well, I see some white in that tree. And you go like, you know what? He's right. There's some white in that tree. Or I see a little bit of dark or black or gray. And uh, I see a little bit of brown and even red. So you get this tree that starts to take on its life. And these little pieces out here, by holding that brush loose and just letting them drop in, they, they, become, they become a little tree. You get the concept, right? And then I can come in here and uh, this... This slingshot stock, though, it ought to be cut out of dogwood. Yeah, it ought to be. Man, dogwood is great for uh, slingshot stalks. And I'm a slingshot aficionado. I keep, uh, I have one that shoots BBs that I built a few years ago. I did 100 slingshots last year for a camp. Um, <laughs> all right, so going in here with my brush a little bit, or my paper towel a little bit. And just pulling some of that out. I like cinder blocks gray. I like them the way they are. I, I uh, almost lied to you. I didn't finish everything in the rooster before I went over here. But I'm going to drop in some color. Doing a little bit of that leg color mix. Remember, I mix most of my colors on the painting itself. But every now and then, I need to get some assistance from this little box I keep over here. And it has to do with a little bit of color from my rooster's legs. And so I can just pick up. A little bit of a Sag Harbor gray, some gray, a little bit of red, yellow, even might pull in a little bit of this brown right there. And then don't mix it too well. Here's what I mean by don't mix it too well. Just let it swirl a little bit and then let your brush do the rest of the mixing on the paper. That's a good little color for legs. Too much, so I wipe some of it out. I like that, okay? So there's about 253 million different hues of this. Uh, bright yellow for the beak. I just like the contrast against the red. I'm reaching up in and I'm grabbing a little bit of that dried red, pulling this down a little bit like so. I think you can see that just fine. I'm going to grab a little bit of gray in here, pull that in. I'm going to grab a little bit. I don't do this very often, but I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white and just let it run through the painting. See that? I just let it hit the water. It's running in right there. Okay. So there's the start of our painting so far. And, uh, Okay, so I could explain this painting to you. I could talk about what I think the caption's going to be. But in my mind, when I'm working on the captions for my paintings, I'm thinking, what would I say that would... It's like storytelling. Alex, if you're... Oh, my gosh. Um, that's Joe Miller. He had a drugstore in Boone. Uh, Alex, you're absolutely right. That is Joe Miller, who was born outside... <laughs> The drugstore in a car used to started selling his art. Hey, Jack, started selling his art in the drugstore. That's Joe Miller. Um, uh, I've met Joe a couple times, sat on the porch with him years ago, and we told stories back and forth, painted at his shop a couple times. Um, really a fun thing. That's the dude, man. I love his stuff. I love it just the fact that he encourages artists every day in some form or fashion. He, he calls it... Uh, make art just make art he's a real gentle guy i love his style his spirit so that's the that's the dude but alec i was getting ready alex i was getting ready to talk about you the way that you come up with a song concept is that you think if i'm going to write a word or you come into a word you're going to say how do i phrase this in such a way that i get my point in if, if it's a rhyming song which a lot are not today how do i put the word in the right place how do i how do I make it understandable? And so I do the same thing on the captions of these crazy little paintings that I do. I'm thinking, you know, I'm not a great artist, people. 
Quit worrying about that you're not good enough and just start creating something. Just do it. Um, just put some paint on the paper. Just just say, you know what I really like is I really love pears because most people start painting pears. Paint some pears. Paint, paint us an apple on the table. Paint a still life. We, we saw a friend, uh, an artist friend in a uh, restaurant Saturday night. My wife and I were able to go out to a social distanced restaurant where the waiter hands everything with uh, what the Beverly Hillbillies use, the pool cue. Not really. It wasn't that bad. Uh, in fact, a great dinner. But she said, I'm still I'm painting. She said, are you still painting? I said, oh, my gosh, yes. And so Susie had painted. She showed us her husband. She reluctantly said, don't show him, don't show him. Her husband says, no, look at this painting. It was a still life. It was um, a painting for uh, of some friends of theirs that have books in it. And the books and the vase were just fantastic. And I thought, this is so good. You know, when you get work like that, it's it's exciting. And so... Um, so when you're so while I'm doing this, I'm sort of working hard to come up with uh, what I think my caption might be that connects. Okay, so now I'm going to go get a little bit of this red here, and wipe some of it off. That's way too much. And just go in and look. Can you see how the brush is? You see how this bamboo brush is sort of arched down? You see that? I'm not straightening it out. I'm using it like that. I'm turning right now to get just a tiny point and go in there and touch those tomatoes. There was too much paint on there, so I reached over, wiped some off. You're in control of how much paint you put where you go, oh, I didn't mean to use that much paint. You didn't? Well, then get a little piece like this and go in and go, boop, ah, just erased it. I feel so much better. Okay. All right, got to have a little apple box brown over here. All right. A little dark underneath. I see that some right there. Um, now, this, this tub right here has to be sort of a rusty brown green. This is an old barrel that's been, uh, or a bucket or a tub that's been collecting fruit from the garden for a long time. See, I see that in my head. I see our wash tub sitting out there that's, that stays outside all the time that I'd go collect pumpkins in or watermelons in or whatever. A little bit of brown here. Now, watch this, okay? We're getting close to this painting being done here. It's a good thing, too. I've only done one painting this morning. I'm sometimes knocking out four or five, but uh, all right. So here's the, here's the other peep here. And then what's he got? He's got his own basket of tomatoes here. I want just a little bit of red. Too much. So I dab it off a little bit. There's that bent brush again. I'm going to go in and get some of that red and paint it right here like this. Maybe I'd go get a piece of green like that. Just touch it ever so slightly with that, with the tip of that brush and just put just a touch of green right there. Maybe he's shooting green tomatoes. Oh, my gosh, because they're hard as a brick, okay? So that gives me an idea. So I might make these a little more green right here. All right. All right, a little beak color. Let's see. We'll use this color right here for the beaks. I like the opposing color on that. It just makes them stand out. And the little orange in the bodies. There we go. And there we go. All right. Is everybody doing okay so far? Um, we can't see him. Yeah, I know. I'm always in the way. Carol, you must have been an art teacher. All right, I'm laughing out loud because I just realized what is happening in this painting. Can't see what you're doing. Thanks, Judy. All right, here we go. Uh, can you see it now? I can't see what I'm doing either most of the days. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to just take this here, go in and get a little bit of sky up here. Just a little wash with this brush. Come in and get some blue paint. Some in here. Uh, now, this tea's been sitting here. This is uh, this was the, the cup that I'm not drinking out of. This was my wife's. Um, this is my wife's, um, dad's cup from his company days. So I'm going to go in and get some of that brown from the tea and let this be the earth, the garden, you know, there's something about, uh, you know, uh, it's, I think it's in Charleston, South Carolina that has the only tea plantation uh, that's still working and selling tea in the States. I, I could be wrong on that, but I think I could be right too. I toured it. I know it was pretty fascinating. All tea is the same tea, you know, that it's just uh, how they dry it. Oolong and green tea and black tea and yeah. All right, got a lesson in coffee last week. Now I'm going to come with my pen and I'm going to put some nails in here. I think you can see that now. Just putting some spots in here like this. Um, all right, see what's happening here? This is going to be the dark little leather pouch. This 
this peep has his other hand on the trigger. That's there. Now you see what's happening, okay? So, all right. So now we need a caption. So I was telling you about how I come up with the caption here. Here it is right here. It says free tomatoes right here. It's all painted. Maybe it was painted in a color at one time and it's sort of run off the sign. I think the sign needs a little work. It's hard to do lots of detail in a small painting, but I think people will get it. There's a bent nail, a couple bent nails in here. There's some weeds coming up. This rue has got some toenails here. See how that color has faded in there? Here's the cinder block. It's got a few little bipples in it there. That's the word I just came up with. Working in this book, I can make up my own words if I want to. Bipples is a good word. Sounds like a clown at some circus. And okay, so there's the slingshot. These are tied on, some strings around. It's, it's nailed in here, fastened onto the box. So they thought this thing through. Um, all right. All right, I got the caption. Got it? See the painting? There it is. Free tomatoes. They're blocking the view. He's pulling back his slingshot, ready to pop the rue in his tail feathers. <laughs> this is my first painting on the garden today. Okay, this is what I did when I was a kid in the garden. When they went through and collected tomatoes or when we went through, my dad would plant 100 tomato plants. We needed four for our family but we gave tomatoes. I would put tomatoes in a grocery bag and balance them on the bar of my bike and ride them down to Granny's house. She wasn't even my granny. It was Granny Jenkins. But she would go, oh, your dad sent me tomatoes. Oh, he's so sweet. And then I would make other stops other days. He gave tomatoes away. And a uh, pretty fascinating story, okay? And yes, and Margie, that's your, your role. No, but love to take classes. <laughs> and you taught me a lot. Thanks, Carol. All right, don't forget to splatter. I'm going to splatter in just a minute. I'm letting this dry just a little bit. So, Margie, I forgot to splatter and put a caption on it and sign it. I got a call today or an email early this morning from Genoa who said, um, hey, I found a painting that you did many, many years ago, and I rushed to see, and there's no name or date, and I panicked. I went, you got to be kidding me because I'm such a stickler at signing and dating art. But then I thought it must have been literally it must have been 2007 or eight when I or uh, excuse me. Yeah, some somewhere along maybe even 2010, 10 years. It could be 10, 10 years ago that I was thinking, I don't know about my art and I don't even know where I sold it. Or So I told her to send me a picture of it and I would figure it out. So your grandson's out in the garden this morning. I love it. So when the, all those tomato pieces were left over, we'd go out and we'd have big garden fights. OK. All right. So you see, this is acting as a little camouflage. So the rue would come in. You got it? You got the story? All right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's uh, being around the garden is a circus. So uh, I always love that. All right. I'm going to let that dry for just a second. And I'm going to reach in here. And I've got uh, about five minutes to go. And I'm going to just uh, show you how fast you can come up with a little card to send somebody. Um, here it is right here. Okay. Let's do it with this pen right here. Let's just put this little, um, let's just put this little peep right here. I think you can see that, can you? There we go. These are the way I draw little peeps. I just think they've got little feathers sticking out. They're squirrely. They've got the little tail feathers coming back like this. They've got one ink. He's got one hand like this because he's holding. What did we start with this morning? We started with the piece of corn. So all the leaves are drooped down around this way. There's one that's kicking back. And there's... Uh, Watching my clock, listening to Wagner, who's faded off into the sunset. And uh, there's something about this that I do not get tired of doing this. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's a story that I love coming through. Uh, it makes me laugh. It makes me smile. It, uh, 
It brought smiles to some people yesterday while I was painting in my pedicure chair. <laughs> Feeling pretty uh, relaxed and going like, my gosh, no wonder women want to rush off and do this. It's lovely. All right. All right, so there's two little peeps. One's got the corn. And let's, let's just paint this like it's an over-exaggerated corn stalk. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. This is theater. Here's all it has to do, okay? You probably couldn't see some of the corn, but you might see some. Here's the stalk coming down. Here's what I do know. I do need a little bit of a smaller brush. So when I need one, sometimes I'll reach in and I'll get this little eighth-inch dagger brush. It's called a dagger brush, I assume because it, I don't know, it doesn't look like a dagger to me. But anyway, none that I've ever made in my blacksmith shop. But there, there's one there. But it's tiny little point, if you can see. But it's really good for coming in and grabbing a little bit of yellow here. And just touching up the edge of these roots a bit. And then grabbing some yellow here. And popping a little yellow there. And a little yellow tassels. You know, the silk that comes off. You call it the tassels. But so do the Scottishmen. Great Scott. Okay, so... Um, some lovely filth over here. All right. So there we go. There's the corn. No question in your mind that that's an ear of corn. I just hit the camera. Sorry for the shake. A uh, little bit of gamble G. That's yellow. By the way, you notice this paint, this pen is bleeding, but not like it in the other painting because this is 140 pound paper. Okay. This is a small four by six piece of paper that I pulled off of this little Fabriano postcard pack. So take a look at this. It's kind of cool. Open it up, flip the postcard up, and take a look and see what's on the back. There's a spot for a stamp and for a note, and you can just mail it like that. Would I? Eh, sometimes I'm just going to mail one like that and say, hey, uh, just there's there's postage stamps on it. I think that's funny. I would, I would still frame it if I got one that had a, you know, if I sent this to Australia and they just went on the front, I go, you know, that was the original art, sir. They go, oh gosh, it says do not bend on it. I go, ship it. I just think that's funny. Okay, so I don't know, but I'm wired weird, okay? I'm just wired differently than most folks. Um, but this paper is 140 pound uh, cold press, and so it doesn't soak up the ink just as fast, but it's beautiful paper to paint on. Um, I talk about flame paper a lot. I talk about Kilimanjaro, which is going to be your more expensive paint from, or more expensive paper from uh, Cheap Joe's. I talk about um, Strathmore is a lower end paper, but it paints just fine. And it is a great paper to learn on. All right, so I'm going to grab a little bit of this tea again. And I'm just going to dip in my tea and I'm just going to paint the earth here. Now look what's happening. That pen is bleeding with the tea. And it's going to give me a little bit, the tea being a tad yellow and the pen being a little blue green. I'm getting a little earthy color. That is garden dirt right there. Whoa! Okay. Uh, <laughs> Alex says these peeps are buff Orpingtons. Uh, you know what? Most peeps uh, start out this buff. They could be. If I wanted them really true buffs, Alex, I'd put, put in a little of this and maybe a touch more orange down here like this. So, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Thanks for being on today. I appreciate you being here. Deborah. thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, Okay, so, so here's what we got. Let's just do a little bit of a sky here, just a, one little mess of blue, and just let this sprinkle off. I'm going to run over just a bit today, not a second, but here we go. Here's, here's this painting, almost finished. How about some popcorn? I'm going to sign it right here. Com. Okay. Rudoodles.com. That's me right there. Okay. There's that. There's that. There's a little bit of, uh, oh man, come on. That's a great painting in about six minutes. Okay. So there it is. I'll post that a little later today. I moved it over. Let's finish this one and then I'm out of here. And then I got a story to tell you tomorrow. Um, and, and that's about, uh, Jenny and the post office. So I've asked Jenny for permission to tell her story, and I want your help in helping. 
do something, okay? This is Jenny who lost the painting, and she's had some hardship going on, and uh, it's going to be a great story. So join me tomorrow and do that. Thanks for sharing my page, and thank you for watching and keeping up with Roo Doodles. Uh, if you want to get a hold of my book, uh, it's called Hey Roo, What's a Wheelbarrow? Here it is right here. Uh, if you go to RooDoodles.com, uh, and that's the actual wheelbarrow that I painted all this after, okay? So that's that's the concept of that right there. Um, my hair is a tad shorter in this picture, so it's time for me to get a haircut. <laughs> but if you Google, hey, Rue, what's a wheelbarrow? If you go to RooDoodles.com, there is a, uh, a link there. You can also download, uh, and by the way, publishers, send me another group. I sold out, but it'll be here, and I'll get them. When you buy books from Amazon, they come to you. When you buy from me, they come from the publisher to me, and then I paint an original in the cover. So the postage, it's going to cost you about three or four bucks more to get it from me, but I turn the postage around for you a couple of times. Anyway, uh, so what I'm saying is that I paint an original rue, a small rue in the cover of each one, something I've wanted to do since I started my first children's book. And so uh, that's the book that's coming out. Thank you, Luann. It's a delightful book. I appreciate that. It has been fun to do. Hey, Rue, what's a wheelbarrow? Taking the kids on a field trip around the farm. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to finish this up right here. Um, and then here it is. Uh, on three. Drop the trees. Okay. Rudoodles.com. If you go to Rudoodles.com to get the book, you'll see a link there that you can download the audio of the book, just the audio of the book. And it's me reading the book with my grandkids and they're all doing the voices. So it's kind of fun. Um, there's the year and Margie, just for Margie, we got to do a little sky splatter here. So I just grab a pen, drop a little of this in there. I love that. That's just kind of a trademark that I wanted to do. And then a little dark down here just because I like this messiness and a little bit of more brown. Even come in with a little bit of tea splatter. There's my tea right there. Splattering this just a little bit. And I've got myself a messy little. On three, drop the trees. And that's all you need to know. The camouflage is gone and then kapow. So that painting, this painting, and uh, hey, uh, wherever it is, I'll throw in that little, uh, a little other painting this morning. I'll price it in such a way that somebody needs their uh, pedicure done. I don't see it right now, but hey, it's all around here. So join me tomorrow. Thanks for sharing my page. Um, and so, um, yeah, thanks for that. The grasshopper in the book is uh, my uh, eight-year-old granddaughter. She was six and a half or seven then, my uh, London. All my grandkids' names, uh, the one family here close to me starts with uh, an L, Lily, Liam, London, Lucy. And... Uh, They're pretty cool. All right. Oh, your boy's got the book. Great. Okay, folks. Hey, it's time to go out of here with a little sound effect this morning. I got my handy dandy. Uh, uh, Chinua, you're going to send me a picture. Uh, send me a picture of the painting that you have. I want to see if I can date it for you. I'm so sorry. That is so weird. But many years ago, I think I had a reason for doing that. Hey, hey, folks, I'm out of here. I'll follow up with some questions. Let's finish this on a sound effect.